So your periodic maintenance, uh, 300 hours is when I'm changing the oil and filter. Uh, read the manual if you uh, haven't done that yet. It's typically right behind the seat. So go on ahead and pull it out here. But get in there and read that manual and that'll tell you exactly when to do things. Let me identify some of the filters for you. Uh, you've got your engine air filter. Um, you're gonna have an outer air filter and there's an inner air filter. I normally change the inner once every two outers. So if I'm doing the outers every 300 hours, I'll do the inners every 600 hours. Um, make sure that you, uh, you don't blow that inner filter out. It is a uh, discard and replace. We get into uh, the other filters I'm gonna do at 300 hours. You've got a stack of three filters down in here. The rear one is your engine oil filter, okay? These two are gonna be your fuel filters. And at the bottom of this guy, you can see there's a sensor down there and that's your fuel water separator. And that would be your fuel in water sensor. It's a little electronic sensor and it can tell you, uh, I said that wrong, water in fuel sensor. It's gonna tell you if you have water in your fuel. So at the bottom of that, uh, that filter, you're gonna see that. So these are both fuel filters and there is the prime for that fuel filter. And this is the bleed screw. Uh, I'm gonna read the manual, uh, but I believe you also take off one of these other fuel connections to bleed as well too. So I will let you know as I'm doing that. But engine oil filter, two fuel filters. Um, obviously Case designed this where you have to take the two fuel filters off to get to the engine oil filter. And this may actually be the line that I take off back here to do that secondary bleeding. Yeah, that is what that is. Okay. Now, another filter, if you look down below here, that's gonna be your hydraulic and transmission filter. So that's uh, another filter you're gonna wanna do at 300 hours. And then, me and my light will walk over here. There's a cartridge filter underneath over here. See that guy right there? That is also a 300 hour filter right there. So that's what the other hydraulic filter that you're gonna to need to change. Of course, after you do your engine oil filters, you're gonna to top off your engine oil down there, your hydraulic oil filters, you're gonna to top off your hydraulic oil right here, and check that dipstick right there. And then, if you didn't know where your top off is for your coolant, that's gonna be this guy right in here. So that's your, your coolant uh, expansion tank. So there's your main filters for the Case 75C. There we go. <laughs> exactly what we expected. That hydraulic did exactly what I expected it to do, which was uh, fall down in a heap. So uh, not too bad. I spilled a little bit of oil, but a little oil dry took care of that. So 
Uh, I wanted to get that one out of the way because obviously I'm going to be dripping some fluids down onto it. So I thought I better get that one out of the way while it was still fairly clean, you know, gravity and all. So um, fuel filters. We've got uh, three or two, two fuel filters here, one of which has this fuel water separator on it. And as I understand it, you push on this little clip here and that allows you to take the fuel water, uh, water in fuel sensor off. I can more effectively push on it with a screwdriver because it is just a spring clip and then pull it right straight down there. It's, so this guy right here is the spring clip. When you push that in, the little clips at the bottom and the top release themselves and it lets that wire come off. So that's pretty smart. Let me go ahead and move that guy out of the way so I don't get a bunch of fluid on that connection. And then back to the filter wrench. Let's see if we can get these guys off without making too much of a mess. Wants to. There we go. So I was struggling with my my two strap wrenches because they were getting a little bit of fuel on them. And they were just slipping off there. So uh, I just grabbed a hold of it with the big channel locks, and off it went. No problem at all. I'll get those get a little bit cleaner rag, clean off all the seat surfaces. Make sure that oil filter over and he's got a good place to seat. Looks pretty clean. So a little oil on the seal. Wrote the hours down on it. <laughs> well, I did write it on the bottom, so. Yeah. Now, according to the instructions, it says tighten it till it makes contact, and then one full turn after that. Okay, we're making contact. We're not going to make a full turn, I can tell you that. Oh! So this is the rear one. We got our oil on the seal. I'm going to try to get some of that wire harness out of the way. There we go. This is three quarters of a turn after it makes contact. Oh, yeah. No, the other one had the 20 newton meters. This one's just three quarters of a turn. Yeah. <laughs> and you go ahead and get that water separator put on there but uh, that's the one that comes with it all right so that was fun uh, doing the oil filters and everything there and the, and the fuel filters so a couple things I learned as I was doing this first off your hydraulic oil filter um, down here uh, you want to take that off first because as you can see um, there's a there's a lot of fuel right I you know don't call me an idiot because I don't think uh, gravity works and the fuel is going to drip down. But I actually did think I'd be able to capture some of that fuel. And uh, it's a little tougher to do than you think. So <laughs> um, primary fuel filter with a water separator on it. Uh, you're going to want to unclip the electric wire on the bottom of that, the sensor wire. You can see it there. Uh, and then you're also going to want to pull that out, unscrew that sensor so that all that fuel can go ahead and drain out. Once you do that, that guy comes off pretty good. Um, the front one, 
the main primary filter, uh, <coughs> it is not going to, it's going to be full of fuel when you pull that guy off. So you're going to make a little bit of a mess. So um, the other thing that you want to do, you want to make sure you take this clip off right here, okay? And that allows this whole unit to pivot out, which allows you to get in and get to uh, the engine oil filter in there on the back side. So that engine oil filter, uh, again, pretty easy to get to, not too bad. I did go through a couple of different fuel filter wrenches. Um, this guy here was probably one of the best ones. This is a little Milwaukee fuel filter wrench and uh, does a nice job. So uh, my strap wrench did okay. On the big fuel filter, I had to get that one, but to get back into the back uh, and that engine oil filter, I did have to use that, uh, uh, that Milwaukee wrench all the way back in there, so. Okay, priming, let's talk about priming. This is where most people are probably gonna screw up um, is, is priming. You don't wanna pre-fill these filters. Uh, the reason you have two fuel filters on here is because we want the fuel going into that common rail to be extremely clean. So don't pre-fill your filters. Follow the instructions in the book, RTFM. This is the section on priming the fuel filter, all right? Pretty simple. You've got a bleed screw right here, okay? Loosen that up one turn. Start pushing this guy in and pumping it. You will push that priming pump in two to 300 times, all right? Once you get fuel only and no air coming out of that bleed screw, you have primed the primary filter, the first filter, the pre-filter, okay? To prime the secondary filter, all right, the bottom side of this tube, all right, is right down here. Actually, I'm sorry, it's not the bottom side of the tube, um, but it is the, it's the return. You see that in there? It's the return from the fuel system. So let me explain to you what's going on here. That, you, you have to take that off and then push this priming bulb another couple hundred times until you get clear fuel out of there. So what's happening is this. When you unscrew this bleed screw and you push that two to 300 times, you're filling this filter up and then you're pushing all the air out and it's bleeding out here. You tighten that screw up. Then you go down and you take that bottom uh, connection off <coughs> for the fuel return and you pump it another two to 300 times. What you're doing is, is you're filling this filter up and you're pushing all of the fuel through the common rail, okay? and then back from the common rail back into that return where it goes back into the tank. So you're filling that up, you're pushing all of the air out of the common rail, pushing all the air out of the common rail for the whole system, and then it's coming back down and back into tank, and you're pulling that off before it goes back into tank. So what you're doing there is you are bleeding the fuel in the entire system, including filling that second fuel filter by doing that. If you don't do that, you're gonna get air in your system and you're gonna have a big problem. So. Make sure you follow the instructions in the book for priming. So prime the uh, water separator first by loosening the bleed screw two to 300 times, tighten that back up, pull that bottom connection off, push it another two to 300 times, you're filling up the second one, bleeding all the air through the system. Once you get done with that, you snap it back on and then you're good to go. So that's priming your fuel system. So next step on here, I'm going to go ahead and put that hydraulic fuel filter on there. Uh, I've got that new filter, new, new filter as well. And uh, I will comment and laugh just a little bit about, uh, I was able to catch most of the fuel in a well coming out of there, but it did make a little bit of a mess. So uh, yeah, have your, uh, have your uh, oil dry ready, your oil dry ready bucket ready to go, because you're definitely going to need it. After I do that, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to change this filter cartridge on this side. That'll be my last filter. I'm also in the process of putting oil back in the engine. So got my funnel there covered up and uh, we'll get her put back together.
Just a little tough because it's rubbing against this line. Not bad though. This one is until the seal contacts plus one full turn. Thirty-two millimeters, or inch and a quarter. Depending on which wrench you've got. With a lot of threads. So their English translation on this one might be off just a little bit. It says to take it on by hand for three quarters of a turn, quote unquote. Um, so I think what they mean is take it on by hand and then give it three quarters of a turn with your with your wrench, which would make sense. I'm just going to take it up kind of snug again because um, there's two different O-rings that I'm tightening up here. So yeah, I'm, I gotta definitely gotta keep going. Until I get it snug. Because you want to get that O ring seated properly. There it is, right there. And it stopped. That's the right way to do it. So, according to the book, it does say to check the battery electrolyte levels. And uh, to be honest with you, I pull that guy out. And either it's really, really clear, or it's down there a ways. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all three of these and get a little bit of a better look at it. Got to use a bigger screwdriver. Let's call it a pry screwdriver. A little pry bar to get into it the first time to get it loosened up. And then I can use this guy. So books that yeah that's low for sure I'm gonna get a little bit of water in that it says if it's low or if it needs refilled frequently contact your local dealer I'm gonna say this isn't frequently but I'm gonna say that it's low and I need to put some in it just water distilled water yeah I definitely needed some I looked in the book and sure enough it is a uh, every uh, 300 hour thing to check your batteries Uh, now for the easy one, air filter. I sure hope it's easy now that I've told you it's easy. Stuff out of Four clips and the um, strata tube assembly comes off. And these are known as strata tubes. Uh, explain to you how they work. So there's a little bit of a turbine on each one of those. So what it does is it gets the air spinning and then the heavy particles fly out to the outside where they fall into this case and eventually fall out the bleeder tube at the bottom. So um, then the clean air goes through a tube right in the center here that's about half the diameter of this and it goes in through. You can see that clean air tube right there and then it goes in through the air filter. So called a strata tube, Donaldson makes them. Um, really nice air filter assemblies. Do a good job of taking fine particulate out. She definitely got some dirt in her. Do not clean. <laughs> so there's the CNH number. Uh, and I'll show you all the part number when, when I get done. 8703-7984. Um, and it is a Donaldson part number. It's interesting that they leave the the Donaldson uh, badging on there too so she's definitely plugged up a little bit but not too bad I wasn't experiencing any problems and very clean on this side mm. 
take you for a little ride here. That's the secondary filter. So that is the safety filter. All diesels have that. They have a safety filter on the inside. Um, I do those every two. And uh, other than that, don't touch it. The, the clean, you know, the, the air filter inside here is very clean, so I'm not even gonna wipe it out. Um, sometimes I would wipe it out if it was really, really dirty, like if we were doing the combine or something. But, but in this case, we're not gonna, not gonna rip it. So, here's our new filter. There's the Donaldson number, P608533. I did get this from my case dealer. So I find it interesting that they uh, they did provide it to me with the Donaldson part number on it, and she just sits right in there. Cover goes back on. Remember, keep the, the the bleeder tube or the dust nipple, whatever you want to call it, keep it to the bottom for sure. Make sure it's seated on there. Just use your fingers. Um, to start putting clips on. I like to do them opposite. And save the hard one for last. Not too bad. There we go. All right, looks good. The other thing I should do is, is make sure that I've got water in here, which it doesn't appear that I do, but my tube's full, so I'm not really that worried about it. But I'll probably go ahead and throw just a little bit of coolant in there as well, too, just to make sure I got something in there. I know I dumped a, about a half a gallon of oil out on the ground, well, into my container. Um, with the hydraulic oil filter, I know I'm going to have to put some in here, so. I'm just gonna go ahead and get ahead of it a little bit and put just a little bit in. Dipstick's down here, fills up on the back side. It's not even on the dipstick right now. So let me go ahead and get a little bit in there. Now, to me, not on the dipstick means at least two quarts. And on the dipstick would be a quart. So I would say I need another half or a little more quart. And I haven't filled the filter up yet, so I probably need another quart and a half, two quarts. I also gotta check the brake fluid reservoir, which is right in there. It's sitting at the minimum. Okay, four grease circuits in the back. You've got one at the bottom of that link, one at the top link, one at the top of this guy, and then right in there. I've only got one grease circuit up there on that control shaft. Two grease circuits on the front axle. Trunnion, right in front of and right behind that front axle. So right in there and right up here. Now there's going to be two grease circs, the four wheel drive. There's going to be one underneath here. All right. There's also one on the top. Now let me tell you a little story about this one on the top here. If you have this fender on, then it lines up about right there where you where you literally can't get to it. So I have to at least loosen the fender up. And once you've loosened all three bolts up, it's just as easy to take the fender off so that you can get to that grease circ on top of there. So yeah, one on the bottom and one on the top. And uh, since I've got the optional fenders on here, I just take the fenders off. Three bolts, zips right off to be able to get those two grease circs. So it's saying every 600 hours, you're supposed to grease those guys right there on top of the wheel housings there. It's the wheel bearing basically is what it is. So 
They're saying every 600 hours, you grease those, turn it 120 degrees, grease it again, turn it 120 degrees. What I'm hearing is, is uh, grease it every 300 hours and uh, make sure it turns in between. So uh, I think that's the last greaser. Okay, now we're looking at the uh, air filter for the cab. This is the cabin air filter and I'm sure glad I opened it up. There was a lot of gunk and uh, mud up in here and it obviously needs cleaned really badly. According to the book, there's one on each side. So I'll have to make sure I get this other side as well too.